I'm going to talk to you about my experience as chair of a taxation review and uh, what insights I take from that. And I'll explain in a moment why, I, perhaps why I was invited to give this talk. Um, Gary will be the only one who really knows that, but um, uh, maybe I can allude to that as we go through. During two, 2008 and 2009, there were several, several democracies were um, undertaking reviews of their tax systems. Those of you in Australia will, will be familiar with the Henry Review. Uh, in the United Kingdom, a uh, Nobel Prize winner, um, Murleys, was leading a review of their tax system. There were several others underway, uh, and one of those, and there was another review in New Zealand, somewhat underneath the international radar. Now, one of those reviews had an immediate impact and led to a uh, substantial reform of the tax system. And I want to talk to you about that process and what I think are some lessons. As I say, it's a case study. It's, it's, these are lessons I infer as chair of that, that tax review system. And uh, it has all the limitations of case studies uh, that you'll be familiar with. Now, in case you're wondering why um, a tax review might be a sensitive topic, uh, let me assure you uh, that uh, reviews of tax systems uh, do tend to be sensitive. Rick, um, Rick Creever and Chris Evans have done a very nice uh, study of the review of tax, tax systems in Australia. And that's their conclusion. The experience suggests that invariably they have limited impact. Um, there are reviews that have had a s significant impact eventually on the uh, design of the tax system in Australia, but there are also many, many reviews which have had limited impact. Likewise, uh, John Head has done a nice study of the tax reviews and their impact in Canada and the United States. He draws similar conclusions. We've had a number in New Zealand with limited impact, but there, are, there is one exception. In fact, the McCaw report wasn't just about the tax system. It, it, it was a more about the, the welfare, a, a range of welfare issues, and this was in New Zealand in the uh, early 1980s, but it didn't have an immediate impact. It really needed uh, a, a reforming government to pick up the ideas, and a lot of the people who were working with um, McCaw uh, and his um, review team were actually officials from different government departments who carried the ideas they were already working on into that report and eventually influenced the Labor government in the mid-1980s. So, um, mixed reception to tax reviews. For one reason or another, and I'm still quite un not absolutely sure why, but we had quite an impact with our review in 2008. And if one had tried to predict that influence when you looked at the, inf the impact that the Henry Review or the Murleys Review had, you would say we wouldn't have had much chance. And certainly we went into this process when we were asked to do this uh, with the expectation maybe we'll just sow the seeds of how to move the tax system over, over a long period of time to a better tax system in New Zealand. Let me give you a bit of background uh, as to um, why, we've, why there was a tax review. So before answering, answering, trying to get to the lessons, I think it might be useful to have some background. Following the 1980s tax reforms in New Zealand, and by the early 1980s, New Zealand's tax system was regarded, at least in the OECD countries, as perhaps one of the, most, uh, the least distortionary of tax systems. Um, I won't go into the detail, but it was a broad base, low rate, high personal rates had been reduced. They'd introduced a comprehensive, no exclusions GST, uh, tax system. The McLeod Review in 2001 uh, was another review that was commissioned by government. It had limited impact on, on the tax system, but it did emphasise a number of the important properties of a good tax system. 
even though it didn't lead to any subsequent uh, review uh, um, tax policy change. But by 2008, you, you could not really um, conclude that New Zealand's tax system was of the quality it, it had been uh, a decade or so earlier. A number of influences were impinging on the tax system. Uh, the uh, globalisation and falling corporate tax rates were, uh, together with population ageing, changing the relative size of the labour force, were, un were undermining the sustainability of the tax base. There was um, welfare policy changes, which had, through such as the Working for Families scheme, which had changed the effective marginal tax rates quite substantially, particularly for people on, on lower incomes. So there are a number of reasons why that tax system needed um, reviewing. There had been an increase in the top personal rate in 2000, which undermined the alignment of the, of the various rates and had led to strong incentives for people to manage their, um, their assets and move uh, their income into in tax instrument, instruments or investment instruments which would lower their tax liability. So uh, traditional tax policy um, processes were struggling to get traction. A lot of the concerns with the tax system were being advised to incoming governments, uh, but they were not getting traction. The 2005 election, the 2008 election, didn't uh, have an influence, or at least the briefings to those incoming governments, didn't have an influence on uh, policies of those incoming governments. Tax was not a media issue. So a game breaker was needed, and that really came from the initiatives of uh, officials and academics. And in 2009, th academics and officials actually took the initiative to generate a lot of activity um, uh, around tax conferences, tax research, to try and expose the, the concerns of the tax system. Eventually, they managed to convince the uh, Minister of Finance to form a review team. And um, when I received the letter from the Minister of Finance asking if I would review this, I thought, OK, that's fine. That sounds interesting. Whether or not we'll have an impact or not is, is probably uh, very unclear and probably unlikely, but it'll be an interesting exercise. I have to say it's one of the most interesting and fun exercises I've ever been on. Um, and there are various processes we introduced which were, were, did make it fun, and um, particularly the degree of engagement we had with the public. Now, the foundation of the tax working group, um, uh, let me just describe how it was formed and what the aims were. The aims were not remarkable. You look at any tax review a group that's put together and, and you'd find that the aims would be very similar. And, and ours were quite standard. Identify the, the uh, difficulties with the current tax system, describe what a good tax system would look like. Uh, we were required to come up with proposals which were fiscally neutral and that put a discipline around the, the way we viewed options. So nothing was particularly unusual about that. But the way in which that group was formed, I think, was very helpful. The officials um, advised the Minister of Finance and the government to put together a group of people who were qualified tax, pre tax practitioners, very experienced, had insight into what was happening to the tax system, what people were doing to try and avoid paying the, the higher tax rates. Uh, it comprised academics, it comprised people who were familiar with the principles of public policy um, and experience in public policy. From the outset, we decided we'd run a very open and engaged process. And uh, we carefully planned that process. And I'll come back to that in a moment. So, the, the process was designed differently, it was short, we only had a year, it was actually less than a year, it was drawing on a depth of expertise and it was highly engaged. Curiously enough, 
the um, process had immediate impact. Once we produced our report, um, it had an um, immediate impact on, on um, government policy intentions. We started the process in early 2009. Tax wasn't a media issue. By January 2010, uh, tax had become a popular media issue. There was one survey that um, asked the question of the public, um, do they consider the tax system needed reforming? 79% by January 2010 were of the view it did. 65% thought the system was unfair, and 56% favoured tax switching, I'll describe that in a moment, and base broadening, which were issues that we surfaced and, and discussed over the preceding uh, nine months. It had an immediate impact on budget policy. Um, and this is a quote taken from Bill English's second budget, uh, and he described tax reform as the centrepiece of this budget. Um, I think it's important that I point these, these um, outcomes, uh, make it clear what the outcomes were, um, because they are rather different from the experience of many reviews. Um, in case there's um, some question about, well, what influence did the tax working group have on this outcome, this is the view of the Prime Minister at the time. He acknowledged uh, in February 2010, prior to the budget, that tax policy was going to be a critical issue for that government. Now, this is a Prime Minister who, prior to the 2008 election, had actually said we are not going to increase GST. That was a statement in the election, uh, lead up to the election. Uh, the Secretary of the Treasury had to acknowledge that this process did what officials were not able to do. These were very satisfying uh, comments for us because we knew we were taking on a pretty risky exercise. So, if you... Um, you may well be asking, well, how do we judge this process to be a success? There are some criteria which uh, Cedric Sanford has listed some criteria for a successful tax review. And in a sense, you could apply these to, um, you, you could adapt these to other policy reviews. I won't go into those in detail. That may be a question you can come back to me in question time. Well, how, how well did we meet uh, Sanford's criteria for a successful tax review. What I take from, the, more importantly for this um, forum, um, what are the lessons that I take from this process? And I did have six at one point, but when Gary asked me to whether or not I'd be prepared to talk about this, I've come up with a seventh one. And um, I'll take you very quickly through those. Some of them will be quite familiar to you if you're experienced with public policy. So in my opinion, quite fundamental to any policy review process is that you apply a rational policy analysis. Now by this, I'm, I mean, this is evident also in the Murley's review of the tax system. It's evident in Ken Henry's review. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that you need to agree on a set of principles of what a good policy has to achieve, in this case, a good tax system. And uh, our principles are pretty standard. I'll, I'll just show you what they are in a moment. You need to identify options for reform. You need to undertake the research to identify the trade-offs between those options. And this is a fairly standard format. Um, and it's provided, but it provides an important anchor or discipline on any review process. So, for example, um, if you're familiar with um, the um, Henry Review or the Murley's Review, these are the criteria against which we were assessing the options for reform. Fairly standard, and altogether, they should go to make, if you do it well, make a coherent tax system. Coherent tax system, in a sense, means that it's meeting certain uh, properties, and those are some of the ones we figured would be important. I don't have time to go into those in any detail. I'm happy to answer questions about that. Um, so 
that, that was the discipline upon which we impose. Nothing particularly novel about that. Sound research and real-time analysis is absolutely critical. And this means that if you are trying to design a good policy according to some agreed principles, you do need the research to understand, for example, how a tax system would impinge on one of those criteria were efficiency and growth effects of a tax system. Um, there is, uh, what are the administrative costs of a, of a tax system, of the different options? What are the distributional effects? Now, there isn't necessarily all of the research available to that. Where there is research, you need to be in a position and have a secretariat or a, or a panel who fully understand the insights from that work, but also a secretariat who can do real-time analysis for you. And we did quite a bit of that work, particularly around the distributional effects of taxes, where it's an area which is under-researched, and there wasn't a great deal of international literature to help us on this. So this is pretty critical, and it's the sort of work that any good review would do. I'll give you an example of that. We made use of this, some of this literature too, to try and get it out to the public and get them to try and understand why we were discussing some options. So here's one example. Um, we distilled the international literature on the, different, on the growth effects of different taxes. And those of you are familiar with the tax literature will know that um, taxes on property um, and taxes on consumption tend to be less distortionary or, and have, have weaker, do not uh, have such adverse growth effects than taxes on, um, on incomes. This chart actually show, is designed to show a unit change in any one of those taxes, leave aside the government expenditure side, for example, for the moment, but down on the bottom left-hand corner, and, and the range of parameters that's available in the literature. It's quite a sophisticated chart. We made a lot of use of this when we talked about the importance of a tax switch away from um, taxing incomes towards taxing consumption. Of course, when the Prime Minister first read our, uh, I, dis I discussed these ideas and switching, um, not surprisingly, he was a little nervous about what might come out of this review process. And I have to say that the Minister, Minister of Finance and the Minister of Revenue were both admitted to me afterwards, they were both very nervous about what was coming out of this process and what was being conveyed in the media and what was being discussed in the public. But they hung in there with us. Um, in order to do all of those things, you, it, it is, and to gain the benefits from the research and an understanding of what was causing the erosion of a good tax system, we involved experts and we consulted widely. Now that's, that's a fairly, um, that's reasonably common practice in New Zealand. Uh, and it was, n consulting with tax experts has been a standard practice in New Zealand. Where we, where we um, differ somewhat is, and I'll come to the engagement side of it, was much more substantial. It also helps, I think a key lesson is that it helps to have very solid grounds for a review. And we were able to demonstrate what was eroding New Zealand's tax system. I think this was very important in, the, in trying to sway public and political opinion. There was a decade of experience with piecemeal uh, changes in the tax system and uh, welfare policy, which was showing, clearly showing having to have had adverse effects on integrity and fairness of the system. And we spent a lot of time explaining that. There had been a housing boom, which exposed the, um, the beneficial effects or the preferential effects of, of um, investment in housing, the tax a benefits of investment in housing. Where we, I think, were much more, much, uh, diff we, we differed substantially from previous reviews, where we probably made the, um, the ministers somewhat nervous is in the extent of our engagement. A much greater emphasis was placed on designing and running a more transparent and engaged review process than had been done before. And we were, we were conscious that there had been um, 
There'd been changes in the political environment since the McCaw report of the mid-80s. Remember, in New Zealand, that was first past the post electoral system. By the time of our review, it was a mixed member proportional representation. So it's much harder for any government to then simply decide on policy and run that through. It is much more important in this environment to create um, a constituency of support to actually review a tax uh, um, a policy area and then to consider, rationally consider options for reform. I thought Paula Bennett's comment this morning, um, explaining is winning, and I think that somewhat sums up why we enjoyed this process and maybe why we were able to influence opinion. Uh, certainly I think that's a nice phrase that runs with this. We developed a communication strategy um, focused initially on problems to create an appetite for solutions. We highlighted major distributional and resource allocation shifts, and we, we considered options for reform. This is the sort of information we put out there to try and influence opinion. This is the growth rate in incomes at different um, taxable incomes, or ex um, according to the Inland Revenue Department, under the period uh, leading up to 2000, when um, before the increase in the top personal tax rate was jumped from 33 to 39%, and what the, the declared income uh, levels were after that period. In a period of high growth in incomes, there was a decline in the number of people reporting incomes above these um, higher levels of um, 100,000, 160,000, and so on. Clearly evidence that people are shifting their incomes into more preferential tax instruments. That's the sort of stuff we put out there. I think the review report um, has to be written in a way which supports the process. There are two types of reviews you'll see in the literature. There's one type of review, and I think the Murley's report in the UK, outstanding piece of academic work, is a good illustration of what you often see. Excellent academic work trying to influence thinking for the long term. There's another style you can adopt, and we unashamedly adopted this, is one that will try and influence policy now. Our report is 70 pages long. It took me an hour once we printed it, took me an hour to read it. I wanted people to be able to pick it up and read it. Okay, it's not a Dickens novel, but it's something you can read uh, in the evening with, with ease. So, um, and fi final uh, key lesson, I think, is this one. And it, it, it's really occurred to me after this process. I think it's critical that a review must try to craft a coherent policy. Now, in the case of tax reform, this is a point which Murley ma Murley's makes in his report, that unless a tax system is coherent, tax reform process can become a process of bargaining over the size of the pie. How do you achieve consensus unless you have a con coherent um, system or at least unless you're advocating coherence in the tax system? Externalities are endemic. Now in this country you have exclusions for GST. I suggest that's part of the problem of getting reform to uh, changes in the GST rate. But it's also um, really opens up a climate of exclusion that if you can couch the arguments well enough, you'll be able to get exclusion for some groups. We were able to show that distributionally there's no benefits and that um, you lose a lot of income, tax revenue, if you do that. Standing back um, and thinking about the OECD, the OECD has actually done some studies on what makes a difference to successful policy review processes. And I've thought about their um, success factors and against what we did. For the most part, I would, ag I would agree, but the first one, an electoral mandate, I don't think that's necessary. If you design the review process, get high engagement and draw in the public and get the confidence of the politicians that there is an issue to be dealt with and you have coherent options, then you can create that mandate. The, the last point um, at the bottom, I would agree with most of the other points, but successful structural reforms take time. Well, if you're convincing enough with your arguments, you can influence change fairly quickly.
The last point, um, condition of the policy regime is important. I absolutely agree, but that's not sufficient. You have to raise awareness of that. And uh, who's benefiting and who's not from changes in the regime and the lack of integrity of the system. Overall assessment, I would say that um, the process, to my mind, underscored the value of well-informed policy advisors prepared to try new approaches to policy development. Payoff that can, that can arise from the courage of a minister to let, let a new process and a, des a differently designed process, uh, let it take legs. They were nervous, I can tell you that, um, but they had the courage to just let us go. Um, collaboration is crucial. Communication, to my mind, I think that's the factor. The public engagement and communication is what made the difference and I think enabled us to convince the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance and Cabinet this is an issue that's important enough for them to embrace in their budget. Um, but I, I would warn, there are other, they've, they looked at this model, they've had designed other review groups to look at other areas. Some of them have been influential but some of them have not been particularly successful. So there's more to it than this, and I'm not quite shot, sure what the other elements are, but I put that out for, there for you to consider, and I look forward to your questions later on. Thanks very much.